It's Monday, February the 20th, 2017, and this is your Barbados Today afternoon update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. Now to the big story. Police have made a major breakthrough in their probe into a spate of burglaries that happened between December 2015 and last month. Three young men were expected to appear in court this morning, charged with 30 burglaries committed in the District C and District B station areas. Those charged are 28-year-old Damien McCarthy and 22-year-old Stephon Tony, both of Rock Hall in St. Philip, and 17-year-old Joshua T. Allen of Riverland, St. Philip. McCarthy is facing 20 counts of burglary, Tony, nine counts, and Aline, one. Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Senator Harry Husband, says he is feeling the pressure from the constant criticisms against issues in education. Husbands told a joint meeting of several DLP branch meetings last night that sometimes he just can't be bothered, especially when he hears what he calls the nonsense on the calling programs. Husbands, however, admitted that one of the most significant weaknesses in the educational system has been government's inability to provide all the places at the critical nursery school level. Well, we are in the process now, in this difficult time, of building six new nursery schools. We have completed two. That's right. One is going to be, one is going to be in this constituency, in Older Hill. One and two are finished. We are now about to start three and four, Government Hill and here in this constituency. But the, the significance of this is not just that we're building buildings and putting the children in it. It is recognized every day the research and education shows that if you're going to build a modern, sustainable educational system, you've got to start at the nursery school. And at that same meeting, outspoken Minister of Commerce and Trade, Donville Ennis, weighed in on the court battle between Central Bank Governor Dr. Delisle Worrell and Minister of Finance Chris Sinclair, stating that Barbados is bigger than both of them. Ennis said that despite the dispute, government will remain focused on ensuring the economy stays afloat. And therefore, each one of us, in whatever tasks come before us to perform, Whatever decisions we are called upon to, to execute or to make, we must always ensure that Barbados comes first and foremost. It cannot be about the title of my job. It cannot be about the car I drive. It cannot be about the ostentious lifestyle. It cannot be about any of those things. It must be about what is in the best interest of Barbados. And I'm satisfied that that <coughs> will work itself. I don't have to say any more about it. Construction magnate Sir Charles Williams has taken a swipe at the Town and Country Planning Department over the time it takes to approve investment projects. Speaking at the official launch of his Apes Hill Country Club sale and rental luxury properties in St. James over the weekend, Sir Charles blamed the Town Planning Office for the 10 years it took for this project to finish. I'm not proud of the fact that what Mr. Don, Minister Davilinus is preaching, and Minister Richard Shady, that it takes too long to get projects of value moving. You all might not believe it, but this project took 10 years. If it had taken five, we would have sold everything by, before the disaster. And I had the discomfort of hearing a person from the town planning office say that it took that long because it was different. I think he thought I was a bigger idiot than a lot of people do. <laughs> but West Morning was just before it, and so was Sandy Lane to extra called courses. So that reasoning was absolutely hollow. Opposition MP for St. Joseph and former Attorney General Dale Marshall says Barbados has now become the laughing stock of the Caribbean over the rift between Central Bank Governor Dr. Delilah Worrell and Minister of Finance Chris Sinclair. 
speaking during the weekend at the end of a mass canvas across St. Michael's Central in support of Arthur Holder, Marsha said the impasse now before the law course is being reported in the Trinidad media in not very flattering terms. The Prime Minister has an expectation that the fiscal matters of Barbados, because the Prime Minister is not the Minister of Finance, he has an expectation that his Minister of Finance and the Governing Central Bank will provide proper leadership for the country. With this impasse between them, it is impossible. And, and at the worst possible time, our foreign reserves are dropping. Um, and I'm not an economist, but you know, I think that it is public knowledge that the, the foreign exchange take for tourism in December um, was uh, lower, much lower than expected, and January again much lower than expected. We're now in February, so at a time when our currency is facing its greatest threat, what is playing out in the lower courts of Barbados are the two individuals who, whose job it is to safeguard our currency and to ensure that there's no devaluation. Economist and consultant Marsha Carroll says the national insurance scheme is already overspending, despite government's pronouncement that it will not happen until 2024. The opposition Barbados Labour Party candidate for St. Michael South Central cited an International Monetary Fund report to ground her contention. She was addressing a branch meeting at the George Lamming Primary School last night. This government in its last actuarial report, the 14th actuarial report I believe it was, was suggesting to us that NIS expenditure, what the NIS is spending, is going to begin to exceed contributions in 2024. That's what we're being told. But the IMF, and I'm quoting a report of theirs, is saying that in fact, NIS expenditure began to exceed contributions in 2013. And yet we are being told that the NIS is okay, we don't have to worry. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't like to be an alarmist because, you know, this government is one that will set a building on fire and then blame you for calling the fire, the, the fire station. <laughs> but we have to call things as they are. We have to speak the truth. In sport, the Barbados Pride team is still basking in the glory of the 2017 WICB Regional Super 50 title. And Shea Hope, one of the most outstanding players of the tournament, has said he will use his performances in the just concluded Super 50 to kickstart his career for West Indies. The 23-year-old right hand struck 101 in Saturday's final to help power Barbados Pride to the Super 50 title with a 59-run victory over Jamaica Scorpions at Coolidge Cricket Ground. Hope finished the tournament as one of the leading run scorers with 482 runs and two centuries following his 125 in the semi-final against Leeward Islands Hurricanes last th Thursday. There's regional and international news after this short break. It's the celebration of agriculture, 50 years and beyond. Come and experience this year's AgroFest exhibition at the historic Queen's Park on February 24th to 26th. Don't miss the African Heritage Month celebrations, the AgroFest Special Edition, an impressive display of leather products made from Barbados' black belly sheep, the best of crop over 2016, and much more. AgroFest 2017. Tickets available at all official box offices. In regional news, Jamaica's acting police commissioner Stephen Williams says the hard work of his officers has proven insufficient to fight crime in the country and there was now therefore a need for divine intervention. In fact, he warned that Jamaica was in perilous times and had become a very violent place with many angry people. Where there is a necessity for us to go beyond hard work and seek a level of divine intervention, support of spirituality, a clear understanding that there is a supreme being and once we acknowledge him, he shall direct. Or part. 
And finally, on the international scene, Malaysia has stepped up diplomatic measures against North Korea in an escalating row over the killing of Kim Jong-nam, the half-brother of North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un. Kim Jong-nam died in mysterious circumstances last week at an airport in the Malaysian capital Kuala Lumpur. Malaysia has recalled its ambassador from the North Korean capital, Pyongyang, and has summoned the North Korean ambassador to seek an explanation. Arriving for a flight he would never take, Kim Jong-nam captured on CCTV entering Kuala Lumpur Airport Terminal 2. The half-brother of the North Korean leader appears to stop and check the departure's information, but then as he heads towards the self-check-in area, he's attacked. A woman appearing to reach over his head in full view of many other passengers. Moments later, he's seen approaching the airport information counter, gesturing towards his face, apparently trying to explain what happened. He's then taken to a medical room inside the terminal. On Saturday, a Malaysian newspaper published this image, showing him slumped in that medical area. An ambulance was called, but he died en route to hospital. And that's news and sports, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. Also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates and like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.